<laughs> At least I can grow a full head of hair, pal. <laughs> Good morning, dear saints, dear brethren, church of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Today is the 15th, Thursday. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please read along with me, word for word. Verse by verse of what we're going to be looking at today. Read along with me because guess what? Guess what? Guess what? I make mistakes. I'm fallible. Scripture is infallible. Okay? Like I tell you, you don't trust me. You trust this, the authorized version. Okay? So please, be along, read along with me. Be a Berean. We're going to look at that verse today, by the way. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Do, do you want truth? Or do you want truth to only fit your agenda? And when it doesn't fit your agenda, then you... <laughs> hmm? Right. 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 Today is 15. Let's read Proverbs 15, shall we? Now, we, we're going to have some expository here today. So, if you got one of them ribbon markers in your set of scriptures, it would, um, it would behoove you to go ahead and get it today. And, um, dear brother, I, I'm... I'm I was kind of waiting for you to send us something, a little little gem on this today, but um, you haven't. But I'm sure the Lord, of course, has uh, shown you many things today, as all you saints who have read the proverb for today. Proverbs 15, a, uh, 1 and 2. A, now, we're not going to have a, a single verse uh, and verse, verse by verse, exposit. But we're not going to do that. We, we got some select verses that we're going to um, go at today, okay? So, verses 1 and 2. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. You know, our Lord talks about blessed be the peacemakers, but there are those out there who are contentious, brawling, combative, argumentative. Hmm. See, we saints are not supposed to fight fire with fire. You know, uh, a man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject, okay, knowing that they are subverted, okay? There's more to that verse, of course, but I can't remember it offhand. But, you know, there comes a point where we as saints, we need to back off. Okay, we need to back off. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright. See, wise, wisdom, the fear of the Lord. Okay, wisdom produces knowledge. Knowledge ought to produce understanding. Wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Knowledge is knowing something. Understanding is departing from evil. Okay, but the mouth of fools who say in their heart there is no God, except for themselves, poureth out foolishness. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And with that, Proverbs 22. Proverbs 22, verses 24 on to 25. The company you keep, dear brethren, the company you keep. We, we've addressed this on several uh, occasions, recently even. But the company you keep is telling. The company you keep is very telling. And there are a lot of Christians, you know, people who aren't, aren't saved, out there who will justify it by, you know, for example, being around lost people, 
hanging out with them. Well, Jesus, you know, he ate with publicans. He wasn't hanging out with them. He was um, giving them truth. And they came to him because they wanted truth. They wanted truth. The company you keep, the company you keep, says a lot. Says a lot. Proverbs 22, 24 to 25. Make no friendship with an angry man. And with a furious man thou shalt not go. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright. But the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. Verse 25. Lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul. And what does Psalm 101 say to us again, dear brethren? What does Psalm 101 say to us again? I will say, uh, verse 3. Ah, uh, no. Oh, no. Verses 1 on to verse 4. I will sing of mercy and judgment unto thee, O Lord, will I sing. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside, shall not cleave unto me. A froward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. You've obviously, sometime in your life, have encountered when you've been around a certain group of people, for some reason, it, it, it happens. You, um, you'll start, you'll sometimes unconsciously will take upon you the mannerisms or the speech patterns of other people. That happens. Uh, there was that thing in Japan that they did that experiment on where a group of people would go around someone, or one dude just standing there, and the group of people, they were all working together, they would go, ah! And they would all duck down, and then the guy was like, whoa! He ducked down too? Group think, in a way? Okay? The company you keep is very telling about where your heart is. Okay? It really is. And then, like I said, there are some out there who would be like, well, you know, we're supposed to be in the world. He's, yes, we are. But see, where Christianity um, <laughs> blows it, of course, because Christianity is not the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Okay? Where they blow it is, they take on to themselves, be as the world to win the world. Okay, you see this um, um, exemplified in the antinomianist pond scum among all what they're just believe and receive. Okay, but First Corinthians five verses nine on to verse thirteen. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators, yet not all together with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters. Then, for then must ye needs go out to the world. See, we are ambassadors for Christ. And we are to be in the world, but not of the world. We are to come out from amongst them and be ye separate. Okay? The old saying, when in Rome, do as the Romans do? No! No! No, no, no. And people love that. You know, well, Paul did, you know. he became, No, he didn't. He was made all things unto all men. Made! Okay, meaning, as a saint, he would witness and preach unto the people the Lord ingratiated him unto. Okay? He didn't alter who he was. He didn't compromise who he was in Christ. Oh, nay, nay. But see, Christianity, that's what they want you to do. Okay? That's what they want you to do. Okay? We are in the world. We are not of the world. Christianity says be of the world to win. No, no, no. No, 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 no. But now I have written unto you not to keep company if any, if any man is called a brother, if any man that is called a brother. Called a brother. Oh, there are a lot of people who call you your Christian brothers, but they're they're not saints, they're not saved. Be a fornicator, or covetous, or idolater, or railer, 
or a drunkard or an extortioner with such an one known not to eat have fellowship with. Hmm? For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within? But them that are without God judgeth. And see, Christianity and lost people, you know, the Christians, a uh, majority of them, and like I said before, there are saints out there for whatever reason want to call themselves Christians. That's your problem, okay? But they'll come to this, but them that are without God judge. See, you can't judge them. It's... We judge ourselves first by a perfect standard. And then we take this perfect standard where we judge ourselves first. Then we judge you according to the same standard that we judge ourselves. There are those out there who will judge you by the standard, but they won't judge themselves. See, I can judge you. Oh, oh, oh and all you antinomianist pond scum. Oh, that just... That just makes you drop your biscuits, doesn't it? Yeah, you get a little leakage going on there, don't you, because of that. I, I judge me first. Every day. Every day. Here. Because I do that, I judge you by the same standard. See, that's how that works. Remember, people, those who don't like judgment, especially... Self-judgment are lost. There is the exception, there is, of a saint who has gotten himself or herself into egregious sin. And when the truth come around, see, because they got the Father in them, they know it and it hurts. So sometimes they want to go, oh, nay, nay. But that's when the Lord, you know, any of you have done this, well, okay? You know, that's when the Lord takes that dial and turns it up on you. You ain't going to have no peace. No, for you, everything you're going to touch is going to turn to rottenness. Um, your sleep is going to be messed up. Oh, brethren, sisters, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Verse 12 again. For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within? And if judgment begin at the house of God, you judge yourself first to the standard. And see, you doing that, you have every right as a saint, because the Father dwells within you, to judge them by the perfect standard that you judge yourself. Lost people, all oh, the all oh, the the antinomianist pond scum, dude. They hate that. They hate. That. They'll judge you, but see, a saint, you know, I'm doing better than I deserve. Oh, Lord's mercy. I know that for fact. Not only do I know that for fact, but I believe that for fact. How about you, brother? How about you, sister? Or do you just say that to affix to your appellation as a Christian, but in works you deny him? Mm, I wonder. But them that are without God, and how do God, how does God judge them that are without? <laughs> right here. Okay. Therefore, put away from amongst yourself, yourselves, that wicked person. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen. This was not the video I thought I was going to do today, by the way. Okay, picking up in Proverbs 15, verses 3, and we will read on to verse 7 now. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. Wait, you think God ain't going to see it? If I descend in, if I go up into heaven, thou art there. If I descend into hell, thou art there. You're not going to hide from the Lord. Okay? He sees everything you do. Okay? A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. You did, brother, 
give something on Proverbs 15. Uh, that was, uh, but you did that yesterday, didn't you? Yes, you did. You did that yesterday. Excuse me. A fool despiseth his father's instruction, but he that regardeth reproof is prudent. Now, fool says in his heart there is no God. Even those who are, whose father is the devil, okay, even they will go contrary to Satan in their pride. And Satan loves that because he's, because they're his children. The antinomianists are Satan's children. They are of their father the devil, okay? Catholics are of their father the devil, okay? And even they will go contrary to their father the devil. But see, so long as they are acting as their own authority and their own standard, they make their father happy. But he that regardeth reproof is prudent. Prudent. And you, you do this in scripture, prudence is usually linked with wisdom, the fear of the Lord. <coughs> in the house of the righteous is much treasure, but in the revenues of the wicked is trouble. Mm. And look at all these Christians out there causing all kinds of trouble. Look at them. <laughs> You know how they're causing trouble? Through indifference. A lot of Christians want option C. A lot of Christians, as with professional wrestling, there is neither good nor bad, but only shades of gray. A lot of Christians want that shade of gray. They want to be able to eat their cake, have their cake and eat it too. Okay, it's either or. And see, when Christianity, Christians try to walk that line that Solomon tried to and couldn't, you make God sick. He, he spews, vomits you out of his mouth, okay? You make God sick, all right? All right? The ultimate cause of trouble, in my opinion, um, is indifference and the sin of indifference. Hey, Neil Peart even said it himself. Well, Getty Lee said it himself. If you choose not to make a choice, no, if you choose not to decide, you still have made a choice. And see, when you pick indifference, who are you siding with? Yourself. Hence, you are of your father, the devil. See how that works? Verse 7. In the lips of the wise, the lips of the wise disperse knowledge, but the heart of the foolish <laughs> doeth not so. Proverbs 10, 1 on verse 5. Proverbs 10, verses 1 on to verse 5. One, uh, uh, one second, please. Proverbs 10, verses 1 on to verse 5. The Proverbs of Solomon. A wise son maketh, glad, maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. And of course, foolish, behaving as you say in your heart, as if you say in your heart there is no God. Treasures of wickedness profit nothing in the long run. See, the deception is, oh sure, today, temporally, they may provide something for you, right? But in the long run, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, okay? But righteousness delivereth from death, and the wages of sin is death. The Lord will not suffer the soul of the righteous to famish, but he casteth away the substance of the wicked. He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich a slack hand. You want your cake and eat it too. You want the option C. You want the gray area, don't you? Yeah, yeah. He that gathereth in summer is a wise son, but he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causes shame. Proverbs 15, verse 8, and on to verse 9. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. But the prayer of the upright is his delight. 
The way of the wicked is an abomination unto the Lord, but he loveth him that followeth after righteousness. Matthew 10, uh, Matthew 23, Matthew 23, Matthew 23, yeah, yeah, yeah. Verses 23 on to verse 27, uh, 28. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. See, the justification with the false is, well, I do this and this and this, but I don't judge myself according to the perfect standard. I do all the outward adornments that is expected of Christianity, but within, let's keep reading, ye blind guides, which strain at a gnat and swallow a camel, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye may clean the outside of the cup and, pla and of the platter, but within they are full of extor extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisees, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Christianity. 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 Back in Proverbs 15, verse 10. Correction is grievous Unto him that forsaketh the way. Uh huh. <laughs> and he that hateth reproof, and he that hateth reproof shall die. Ooh, and the wages of sin is death. Or, if you're a saint, uh, he who hateth reproof shall die. Uh, you mess, long, uh, mess around in that sin long enough, brother, uh, the Lord will kill you. Why? You're making him look bad as a saint. Pro, uh, Hebrews 12, 5 out of 13. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards, not sons. Now see, what can happen with a saint is, a saint can get so far gone in his sin, or her sin, that the Lord stop chastising, stop rebuking. And see, as a saint, if that's happened to you, that, that ought to scare the hell out of you. That, uh, that uh, as a saint, you know you're doing something wrong. And you continue on doing it. The Lord has warned you countless, countless times. Okay? But you persist. And then where is the chastisement? Where is it now? It's not there, is it? That ought to scare the hell out of you. Because that could mean that the Lord is setting you up for a fall that you will not recover from. You know what I'm saying. And remember, you're, you're thinking about getting messed up in sin, huh? You read that book of Lamentations, boy. That'll scare the hell out of you. <laughs> okay? <laughs> yeah, that really ought to scare the hell out of you. Okay? Furthermore, verse 9, we have had fathers of our flesh with which corrected us and we gave them reverence shall we not shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the cattle of father of spirits and live for they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure 
but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. See, like I've told you before, you and I can't see the chasten. Well, some, sometime we can, okay? Sometime we can see the chastisement of a saint. And as a fellow saint, seeing it's like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, brother. I love you. The Lord knows what he's doing. He loves you. <laughs> That's, he, you know, a saint. Okay, the, God's present tense love is there for a saint. Not a Christ rejecting sinner, okay? But, you know, it's like, oh, boy, brother, I'm sorry you're going through that. But see, after the chastisement, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit, the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. You, as a saint, can see that end result, the peaceable fruit of righteousness in the saint that has been chastised by the Lord. You can see it. There are a lot out there who can fake that. But see, it doesn't endure. Okay? Now, hey, we, we make mistakes. Yes, we do. Sometimes we return to our own vomit. But, dude, there comes a point in a saint's life where you will touch that hot pan one too many times and finally get the hint to stay away from it. Hence, the peaceable fruit of righteousness that chastisement yields. That, you and I as a saint can see in other saints. That we can see. Okay? Readily. All right? Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. Proverbs 6. Proverbs 6. Two verses. 23 on the 24. Proverbs 6. 23 on the 24. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Why? To keep thee from the evil woman, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, and all her whorish daughters. Antinomianism, Calvinism, hmm. Episcopalianism, if you want to call it that. Methodists, okay? German Catholics, Lutherans, Catholics in general. Need I continue? To keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Mm. Mm. And of course, Psalm 119, Teth. Psalm 119, Teth. What's the matter? Huh? What's the matter? You don't know where that is? You don't know where that is, huh? Why? I'm not going to tell you the verses. Psalm 119, Teth. Find it. Go ahead. Look. Psalm 119, Teth. Thou hast dealt well with thy servant, O Lord, according unto thy word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I have believed thy commandments. Thou hast dealt well with thy servant? Ver, I'm not going to tell you. I want you to find it. I keep telling you, learn to decipher Psalm 119 by the heading. You do that. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now I have kept thy word. Thou art good, and doest good. Teach me thy statutes. And one of the best ways to be taught the statutes of the Lord is through pain. <laughs> I wish it wasn't so, but, you know, because our spirit and soul are housed in this. The proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep thy precepts with my whole heart. Their heart is as fat as grease. But I delight in thy law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. Thou hast dealt well with thy servant, O Lord, according unto thy word. 
The law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. Everything that Satan can offer you. Okay? All right, now, Proverbs 15, verse 11. Hell and destruction are before the Lord. How much more than the hearts of the children of men. And if I didn't even bother to put Jeremiah 17, 9 out of 10. The heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who, don't, who can know it? Okay, if, so, if one of you want to put that in the comment section, please feel free. I might do it in the, um, the description box. I don't know. But, but, Proverbs 28, verses 25 and 26. He that is of a proud heart stirreth up strife. Like these antinomianists and Catholics, too. And, of course, the stupid, sinless perfectionists. Proud heart. They are their own gods. They are their own standard. They live by their own morals. Not even, if anything, loosely based upon Scripture according to their own warped mind. See, when you are your own standard, that warps the mind, man. He that, uh, he that is a, of a proud heart stirreth up strife, but he that putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made fat. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. And the fool says in his heart there is no God. But see, the fool says there is no capital G God, but they are their own God, the little G, remember. But whoso walketh wisely shall be delivered. Proverbs 15, 12. A scorner loveth not one that reproveth him, neither will he go unto the wise. Oh, yeah. How many of you have been in conversation with someone who claims to be a saint, but they're just a Christian, and you, you're, you know, the Lord through you is giving them scripture. So, hey, hey, brother, or hey, sister, um, uh, uh, dude, you, who are you to judge me? I, 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 I judge myself first uh, by the scripture. I'm so, uh, you know, I judge myself first. Therefore, I can judge you because uh, through the same. Who are you to judge me? Okay, I have even Abraham as my father. Say I not that you are a devil. Justification, 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 justification. And then through scripture, when they can't, they turn around, you have a devil. Bunch of one verse uh, references here. Okay. And this is verse 12. A scorner loveth not one that reproveth him, neither will he go unto the wise. Proverbs 29 1. He that being often reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. Not willing to take correction. I want to do what I want to do. All things are lawful for me. I am saved because I just believe. You're a devil. Okay, pal. Uh, backtrack. Proverbs 27. Proverbs 27. Verse 22. <laughs> Though thou shouldest bray a fool in a mortar among wheat with a pestle, yet will not his foolishness depart from him. Why? Because the fool says in his heart there is no God. So when you have someone who says in his own heart there is no God but himself, and they will not be corrected, you know, it, it, it's like, you know, pisseth against the wind, casting your pearls before swine, okay? We didn't mention, oh, I'll go to that because it didn't, didn't, didn't come to me, okay? Revelation 9. Revelation 9. Why are we looking here? Because This is very important, too. Keep this in mind about Revelation chapter 9. And we're going to have two verses here in Revelation chapter 9, if I can get there. Revelation chapter 9, verses 21 to verse 21. Read the context if you want, but the point is, see, someone who hardens their neck, someone who refuses reproof, let the 
them alone. They're the blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, they're both going to fall into the ditch. Okay? As saints, one, two admonition. Sometimes we do more. Yes, we do. Okay? But what I'm getting at is, it's not our jobs as saint when, saints when someone just will not receive truth from you or from anybody. And you got to remember the context in that too. Uh, Samuel, you know, the people want a king, Lord. And the Lord's like, do what they ask. Remember, they haven't rejected you. They've rejected me. And we are his ambassadors. So, of course, we're going to feel the venom of them who want to be their own gods. But see, during the time of Jacob's trouble, the body of Christ is not going to be there. Oh, there are going to be all kinds of Christians during the time of Jacob's trouble. Absolutely, they're going to be. Absolutely. I personally believe that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to refer to you who get left behind as Christians. Okay? I, I truly believe that, of course. Okay? But here's the point. There's no body of Christ on the earth during the time of Jacob's trouble. It is by faith and works during the time of Jacob's trouble. See, the wicked, disgusting, pond scum, antinomianist, free gracer is building you up to go into the time of Jacob's trouble thinking that you just believe and receive. You take the mark of the beast in your right hand or in your forehead, and guess what? You're damned to hell! That's why these guys are doing what they're doing. That's why they're pushing so hard. That's why they're gaining daily in popularity. Okay, They're preparing you people who get left behind to take the mark of the beast by telling you a lie. Okay, But you got to remember, verse 20 and 21 in Revelation 9, the point is, and the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, pharmacia, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Sorceries in a Greek, in a Greek, is the word pharmakeia. A Greek. Notice I did not say the Greek. A Greek, because a lot of the Greek manuscripts have pharmakeia there. Pharmacy. Pharmakeia. You get it? The point. When all Chades in one of the worst periods in the history, in history that the world will ever know, the time of Jacob's trouble, that seven-year period where the wars and the bloodshed and the famine and the death is going to be so profound that it's going to dwarf all the world wars and all the wars combined. It's going to make the Holocaust look like nothing. Under all that duress, under all of that, and this is in Revelation 9. This is before the mark of the beast. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. The book of Revelation isn't chronological. Woohoo! <laughs> I, I, I think you got a little too high on yourself there, buddy boy. Uh, hey, yeah, yeah. Uh, but this is before the mark of the beast too. Meaning when you take that, you're damned. But yet under all these distress... These people will not repent. Think about that, brethren. There are people out there who have heard the truth and they deceive themselves thinking they're a Christian. Well, they are a Christian, but they deceive themselves thinking that they're a saint, but yet they're not. And when you, a saint, can see in the fake that they ain't a saint, and they don't want to hear it, under the greatest of duress, there are people out there who will not, will not turn from themselves. One more proof text on that. Revelation 16, 9 on to 11. And guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Now, this is after the mark of the beast. But, the, oh, yeah, that's right. Excuse me. The book of Revelation is a crime. <laughs> Dude. 
What in the days is wrong with you? <laughs> anyway, Revelation 16, 9 unto 11. And men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which had power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain. And blasphemed God, and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. Now one could make the, well, maybe these guys had the mark of the beats. Uh, maybe? Well, okay, that obviously, because once you take the mark of the beast, you're, you're done for. Okay, you're done for. So, contextually, scripturally, when you take the mark, and see, this is why these antinomianist guys are so dangerous. We, the body of Christ, are going to be taken out of here before the time of Jacob's trouble. And then these idiots are going to be left behind, still preaching in you, just believe and receive. It's by grace through faith from beginning to end. Okay? That's what they're going to be telling you, people who get left behind. And of course, you got the sweetheart like the guy from Canada, so sweet and endearing. He can fool you people into believing that. And then it's like, oh, hey, you got to provide for your own house. Well, what is, don't worry about it. You just believe it. You, you're okay. Don't worry about it. You take the mark of the beast in your right hand and your forehead, you go out, you're done. You're done. So, with that in mind, the finality of the mark of the beast. I don't think the context we just read lends itself thereon to. Because if you have taken the mark of the beast, <laughs> there's no repentance for you. I mean, Hebrews chapter, uh, which one is that? Hebrews chapter 6. You know, today the people who say, you know, that you got to stop sinning and you can lose your salvation today. Well, yeah, you can lose yours. You can't lose the salvation of the Lord's. Before you chop that up, have the stones to play the whole thing, pal. You can lose your salvation. You cannot lose the salvation of God, which is the Lord himself. The, him in you. You cannot lose what isn't yours to lose. But if you save yourself by your own belief, or if you got to stop sinning, or if you're a Catholic... Of course, it's yours. You're keeping it. Okay? Okay? But see, under all this threat, have the stones to play that whole context there, tough guy. Okay? But see, the context here, neither they repented. And if someone takes the mark of the beat, there, there's no repentance there. Point. There are people who've heard the truth, know the truth, and are on that sinking submarine without a way out, and the water's coming up, and they're going to curse God and die and go to hell. People who have heard and even know, but just like my mother, they couldn't get over themselves. They could not get over themselves. Proverbs 15, picking up at verse 13. On to verse 18. A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance. But by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. Sorrow of the heart. When you're in sin, when you sin, that kind of takes away from your being merry, doesn't it? And if it doesn't, you got some self-examination to do. Hmm. The heart of him that hath understanding seeketh knowledge. The heart of him that hath departing from evil, understanding, seeketh knowledge. And see, when you have the fear of the Lord, wisdom leads on to knowledge, leads on to understanding. Wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Okay? Knowledge is the byproduct of wisdom and understanding. Okay? See, wisdom will give you the knowledge to know what is good and evil because you have a perfect standard that tells you such. And because you have the Lord within you and you want to do this, okay? Because remember, the Lord doesn't force you to do anything. 
you're going to have understanding and depart from evil. Okay? The heart of him that hath understanding seeketh knowledge, but the mouth of fools feedeth on foolishness. Feedeth on foolishness. See, and now the point is, fear of the Lord is there, you're going to have departing from evil, and that's going to lead on to knowledge. Okay? Wisdom produces knowledge. Wisdom produces understanding. It begins with wisdom, the fear of the Lord. But the mouth of fools who say in their heart there is no God, and these guys are so smooth, oh boy, subtle, they speak like dragons. And remember, a dragon speaks very smoothly, subtly. Oh, they never, they never give their voice above a whisper. All the days of the afflicted are evil, but he that is of a merry heart hath a continual feast. All the days of the afflicted are evil. <laughs> when, you're, when you're in chastisement, it, it sure does feel like you're going through chalets, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he that is of a merry heart hath a continual feast. See, when, when you're going through some chastisement, brother, sister, I, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir, as it were. And find me choir in scripture, by the way. Good point. But, you know, when you're going through it, 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 it's horrible. But see, within you, you know that because the God, because the God of heaven, our Lord Jesus Christ, whom he loves, he chasteneth, whom he loveth. Because love only appears twice. Whom he loveth, he chasteneth. So, if the Lord is chastening you, he dealeth with you as with sons. That includes daughters as well. Okay? So, as you're going through it, you can know somewhere in the recesses of your mind that the Lord is doing it for your profit. So, I say, one who has been through horrific chastisement, yes, the peaceable fruits of righteousness. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you for allowing me to suffer the consequences of my sins. See, and, and, that, and that's something too, a little rabbit here. Um, when you go the way the Lord has elected, the cross, death to yourself, contrition, fear of the Lord, and see, and lost people, like I tell you all the time, you lost people, you Christians, you can't understand this because you haven't been through that. And when you get, when you were broken of your self-righteousness, when you stop pointing the finger at other people, when you take full responsibility and you have the hell scared out of you, you can't wait to call upon the name of the Lord. You can't wait to do it. And see, you lost people, you don't get that. Because you've never been through that. Okay? You've never been through that. See, when the Lord, when you go the way He's chosen and He saves you, He seals you with Himself. Once saved, always saved. Okay? You're once saved, always saved. All right? You got the Father within you. Your eternity, like it says in Ephesians chapter 1, which the Calvinists really love to mess up. Oh yeah, they, they really like to mess that one up with their stupid predestination thing. But see, when the Lord saves you, you are predestined to be with the Lord. Okay, that's what that's talking about. Okay, your eternity is set. Okay, nothing can get between you and the Lord and His salvation. But that doesn't mean that He's going to remove the consequences temporarily. In this life now, doesn't mean he's going to really remove the consequences of the sins. Okay? For example, you spend most of your life smoking cigarettes, the Lord saves you, you quit, and then, oh golly gee willikers, you get lung cancer or heart problems. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. You, you are a drunkard. Lord saves you. 
seals you. Absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen, amen. But your liver is shot. Your arteries are hardened. Hmm? You've been a glutton. You're a glutton. Or a fornicator. Lord saves you. All your sins are forgiven. Past, present, and future. Yes, that is true. But see, you were a glutton. And years of eating high fructose corn syrup affecting your health. You were a fornicator. Huh? Lord saves you, seals you. Amen, amen. Be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. But the memories are there. You close your eyes to be with your wife. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a memory of something of the past. Or if you were once a sodomite like I was. See, your eternity is set with the Lord when you go the way of the cross, the way He has ordained, the way He has called. That makes you the call, by the way. Your, your eternity, you're, you're going to be with the Lord. Amen. But remember, that doesn't mean he's going to absolve of you the consequences of your sins here. Don't forget that. A lot of Christianity preaches contrary to that. And that's where these devils like worm their way in to try to justify their license to sin. So say, hey, keep on doing it because, hey, your sins are forgiven. So you can keep on doing it. No. <laughs> no. No. We, we, we talked about that all this week and last a couple times. Okay? The sinless perfection thing. You know, you can't stop sinning. Does that mean that you should not, you know, try to even not sin at all? No! <laughs> okay? No! You know, like I said, it's the, the, the thing there. You got the idiot antinomianists like, hey... Sin as much as you want. The more you sin, the more you, uh, grace you have. You got the sinless perfectionist. You got to stop sinning. It's like, ah! Romans 7. Romans 7. Is like, that's the truth. That decimates both these idiots. Okay? <laughs> okay? Seriously. Seriously. Okay? Now let's continue. Let's continue. <clears throat> Verse 16. Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble therewith. <laughs> Better is a dinner of herbs where love is than a stalled ox and hatred therewith. Oh, oh, brother. A dinner where love is where two saved saints Two saints in union as man and wife. It's like, honey, you know, we, we don't have much. So we're just going to have ramen, you know, and with a little egg in it. It's nothing, but I love you. I love you, and we're in this together. You have a magnificent feast, but are treated by like a criminal by either your husband or either your wife. That's that unequally yoked thing. Okay, I'm going to marriage. I'm going to put that in there for this video too. Hmm? That one where they say, eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. We're going to be looking at that, so I'm, uh, I'm going to shut up. Proverbs 18. A wrathful man stirreth up strife, but he that is slow to anger appeaseth strife. Proverbs 17. Proverbs 17. Verses 18 unto 20. A man void of understanding striketh hands and becometh surety in the presence of his friend. Uh, owe no man anything but to love one another. Don't get in debt. Don't get in debt. 
He loveth transgression that loveth strife. There are these guys out there here on YouTube who, like I said, all they do is attack people. They give no admonition. They give no instruction. They give no teaching. Nothing. All they do is attack other people. And they, I mean, that one idiot from, you know, the bloke of Blackpool is a perfect example of this. Always pointing the finger at everybody else. Doesn't judge himself. <laughs> and a lot also, and that, that at least he's not an antinomianist. I'll give him that. But uh, the antinomianists are the same way. They love strife. They love strife. They do. I mean, I heard recently, um, I, I heard it, uh, these, these antinomianist guys just yelling at each other, speaking over each other, cursing. I mean, again, the free gracers drop the F word like it's nobody's business. They, they, I mean, they don't care. They're not saved. They're not saved, people. <laughs> they're, they're not saved. Please, please, don't be deceived by these idiots, okay? But he that loveth transgression, loveth strife. The antinomianists love sin. They, they have a license to sin. Therefore, they love strife. And he that exalteth his gate seeketh destruction. I'm saved because I just believe. I don't sin anymore. I belong to the church. That that man of sin, the son of perdition, Satan, has found it. He that hath a froward heart findeth no good, and there is none good but God. And he that hath a perverse tongue <laughs> falleth into mischief. A perverse tongue. Okay? Like I said, uh, uh, dude, any of you have heard some of these free gracers when they get together? It's like wow, they they ought to they ought to pay, they ought to put an R rating on that that kind of stuff. They ought to make at least make their stuff available uh, for eighteen and above. I mean, they really ought to. But then again, see, they're you know they're you know working for the devil anyway. So, okay. Proverbs thirteen, just one verse. Proverbs thirteen, one verse. Verse ten. Only by pride cometh contention. All things shall offer for me. I'm going to listen to my CCM. Don't judge me. You can't judge me. God, only God can judge me. Yeah, you're right. You want to hear what he says? You're a devil. Bye-bye. Oh, <laughs> I'll roll up another one and fire it at your head, dude. Go right ahead. Enjoy yourself. This is your best life now. Go right ahead. Only by pride cometh contention, but with the well-advised is wisdom, fear the Lord. Okay? Proverbs 23. <laughs> Proverbs 23, verses 6 on to 9. I was just said this. Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats. They look good. Oh, it might even taste good. But see, they'll rot your teeth, the poison your belly. For as he thinketh in his heart. <laughs> it's not funny. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. As he thinketh in his heart. He is his own God. How, how can someone's heart be with you when there's no room in that heart for the Lord, but it's filled only with themselves? Have you ever thought about that? The, that and this is another reason why there needs to be that separation, brethren. Free graces, Catholics, <laughs> stupid, sinless perfectionists, Christians in general. They are their own standard. They worship a God of their own making, which is themselves. And when you are your own standard, when you are the God of your heart, your own heart, what room is there for anyone else?
Seriously. What, what room is there for anyone else? The morsel which thou hast eaten up, eaten shalt thou vomit up, and lose thy sweet words. Verse 9. Speak not in the ears of the fool. There's the tie-in right there. In the context we just looked at, there's the tie-in. Fool says in his heart, there is no God. And when you're fool and you are your own God, <laughs> speak not in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of thy words. And remember, most of these, especially Christians, have heard the true gospel, but they don't want it. They don't want it. I'm saved because I just believe I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Proverbs 15, picking up at verse 19, on to verse 21. The way of the slothful man is as a hedge of thorns, but the way of the righteous is made plain. And what are the things of the world? Thorns that choke the word and that become unfruitful. Okay, or excuse me, where you use a little bone right there, choke a guy out. Right. A wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish man despiseth his mother. <laughs> Folly is joy to him that is destitute of wisdom. But a man of understanding walketh uprightly. I love that verse. I love that verse. Folly is joy to him that is destitute of wisdom. But a man of understanding, departing from evil, walketh uprightly. And of course, the uh, right away too, uh, right away, I, I mean, when the Lord and I were getting this together, it's like <laughs> Proverbs 14, 9. Fools make a mock at sin, but among the righteous there is favor. You know how they mock sin? They make light of it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I mean, don't, you shouldn't do that. But don't worry if you do. You saved yourself. You are your own God. You are your own standard. So you can talk. I mean, when atheists say about these guys, it's like, wow, you're you're calling yourself a Christian. Aren't you supposed to act a little Christ-like? But yet you're dropping F-bombs and yelling at each other and arguing all the time? It, it's, it's, it's revolting. Isaiah 3, 9 on to 11. Have you noticed that We've had in this um, video thus far, now this, I believe, the second reference onto a 9, onto 11. Hmm. I wonder. Isaiah 3, 9 unto 11. The shoe of their countenance, their bodily thing. Okay? Remember, countenance is the body, visage is the face. The shoe of their countenance doth witness against them. And they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Again, the free gracers. They, they, they boast their stuff, man. Okay? They boast in it. I mean, come on. Listen to any of these guys in their ridiculous live streams. You'll see it. Okay? I mean, it's these guys have gotten so bad that even known devils are like, well, dude, we, you know, we're, we're working for the same side here, but you guys are going too far. Okay, we have a facade to keep up We, you know, the suspension of disbelief. You guys are ruining it for us, okay? It makes sense why the one uh, bloke, a black bull guy, focuses in on them because he's one of them. He's a lost devil, but he's like, dude, you guys are making... <laughs> devil's making the devils look bad. That's the way it is nowadays, guys. Especially when you get involved with these uh, these stupid free gracers, which I have told you, I, I I harp on them. That's the most dangerous heresy of today, I believe, totally, totally. And when we, the body of Christ, get out of here, you're gonna have these guys left behind. Just believe and receive. Take that mark, and you're damned. They're the most dangerous today, absolutely. I have no doubt about that. Okay. The shoe of their countenance doth witness against them, 
and they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. They, 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 they declare their sin as Sodom. Sodom. Sodomy? Sodomy? Sodomite? Sodomite marriage is legal? Look on YouTube at some of these sodomite channels where boasting of sodomite marriage. They declare their sin as Sodom. Uh, June was Pride Month. <laughs> hey, the antinomianist is not bound under any morality of any law. License to sin. Okay? License to sin. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. It's not funny. It's just, it's, it's not funny. Let's continue. Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with them, for they shall eat the fruit of their doing. Woe unto the wicked, it shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hand shall be given him. You see two forms of reaping what you sow. Again. You go the way that our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, has elected, the way of the cross. You go His way. He saves you and seals you. You're, you're eternally secure. Your destination is fixed. But that doesn't mean that He's going to remove the consequences of your sins in this life. You're, you're forgiven of your sins. Absolutely. Absolutely. But the consequence, dear friend. See... And, that, and thus, the perspective, the mindset. The saint is eternally minded. Or we ought to be. The false are carnally minded. Right here. Carnal, fleshly. Or temporally minded. Rome. They have the two swords. The spiritual and the temporal. Temporal, they mean that the Rome believes that they have the right to tell you what to do. And spiritual, uh, uh, Sosa, through his little puppet, uh, Francis, <coughs> has the right to uh, put you into hell, or to absolve you from hell, or send you to purgatory, or the, the back rooms, or whatever that is. Okay? Let me break. Let me break. But see, 10 and 11. Reaping what you sow. That works both ways. And like I said, you go the way of the cross, the way our Lord has elected, and He saves you and says, you're going to be in heaven with the Lord. And the way you serve Him reflects Him. And that matters. That matters. Unlike what the antinomianist says. That matters. Okay? Okay? So, your eternity is set. But see, this is not it. This is not everything. To the Christian, this is everything. Because this is their best life now. Okay? Alright, you see? Do you see that, my dear friend? Okay? Now, let's go back to Proverbs 15. Picking up at 19, on to verse 21. Oh, wait, no. Did we already do verse... Uh, yeah, we're not done. Excuse me. Excuse me. Verse 21 again. Excuse me. Folly is joy to him that is destitute of wisdom, but a man of understanding walketh uprightly. Beg your pardon. Beg your pardon. Jeremiah 8.12, just one verse. Jeremiah 8.12, one verse. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. Therefore shall they fall among them that fall. In the time of their visitation, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. So, they declare their sin as Sodom. And they're not ashamed of their sin. But, they, they, they can't blush. They, they boast it. They can't blush. No shame. Hey, you, you saved yourself by your own belief. Don't worry about it. And you program that into someone's head. Hey, they make mock at sin. They make light at sin. Ezekiel 8. Ezekiel 8. 
And nowadays, dude, especially amongst Christians, especially amongst these Christians, the Christian women, perfect example, dressing like whores, wearing things, showing off things that they shouldn't, putting on war paint. The men even wearing these disgusting tight things, okay? It works both ways. Ezekiel 8, 5 on to 16. Then said he unto me, Son of man, lift up thine eyes now the way toward the north. So I lifted up mine eyes the way toward the north, and behold, northward at the gate of the altar, this image of jealousy in the entry. Mm. Something that isn't God, obviously. And that image of je this image of jealousy. Oh, yourself, for our instruction in righteousness. Mm -hmm. He said furthermore unto me, Son of man, seest thou what they do, even the great abominations that the house of Israel committeth here, that I should go far off from my sanctuary? But turn, ye that, turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. And he brought me to the door of the court, and when I looked, behold, the hole in the wall. Then said he unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I had digged the wall, and when I had digged in the wall, behold, a door. And he said unto me, Go in and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. So I went in and saw, and behold, every form of creeping things, and abominable beasts, and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. And there stood before them seventy men of the ancients of the house of Israel, and in the midst of them stood Jaznaiah the son of Shaphan, with, his, with every man his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. Incidentally, I have heard about the Septuagint. I forget what the number was, but I have heard people try to tie you know, with the 70 elders. I think it was like 71 or 74 with the, Septu the Septuagint was not before Christ, okay? Don't, I got one of them, they're, 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 that's where, that's, it's Catholic, don't believe that, okay? But I've heard people, you know, with the 70, whatever it was, in Alexandria, they've tried to tie it into this, okay? Just mentioning that. Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? Every man in the chambers of his imagery? For they say, The Lord seeth us not. Lord hath forsaken the earth. And we have already read that the Lord, you're not going to hide from the Lord. And you know, in, I believe it's Psalm 119, Mem. I believe it is. I might be wrong on that. I have, I know more than the ancients, where it says that in Psalm 119. I have more understanding than the, the ancients, because I keep thy precepts. The ancients, the older people who ought to know better, but yet are going after their covetousness. He said also unto me, Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. We won't go there. Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house. And behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men, with their backs toward the temple of the Lord and their faces toward the east. And they worshipped the sun toward the east. The land of the rising sun, Japan. Worship the sun. Abracadabra, hocus pocus. The raising of the Pucharist. Baal worship. Baal worship. Let's finish the chapter while we're at it. 
Then he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence and have returned to provoke me to anger. And lo, they put the branch to their nose. What does that mean? Maybe deferring the smell? Therefore will I also deal in fury. Mine eye shall not spare. Neither will I have pity. And though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. Why? All things are lawful for me. You are your own God. And when you're your own God, there's no room for anyone but you. And you know, Paul's spirit was stirred when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. And it's weird. Christianity calls we the saints the heretics. Proverbs 15, picking up at verse 22, on to verse 26. Without counsel, purposes are disappointed. But in the multitude of counselors, they are, safe, they, are, they are established. In the multitude of counselors. The Lord used many hands to give us the scriptures. Going on to a brother for counsel. Several brethren. Okay, I've done that before. Hey, brother, can I get your opinion or feedback? Okay. A lot of God times y'all don't answer me, though. But <laughs> some do, but a lot of times uh, you don't. That, that, that. But anyway, okay, let's continue. Verse 23. A man hath joy by the answer of his mouth, and a word spoken in due season. How good is it? And there is none good but God. Giving a word of comfort from the scriptures. Oh, oh, uh, some of you sisters out there, uh, there are two offhand that I know of who are really just excellent at giving scriptures verses of scripture brethren do that too uh, but you know giving uh, a morsel of scripture at just that opportune time because our father's time is perfect huh? verse 24 the way of life is above to the wise that he may depart from, the hell, from hell beneath amen and Jesus Christ he is the way the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Look at that verse. The way of life is above to the wise, those who fear the Lord. Verse 25. The Lord will destroy the house of the proud, but he will establish the border of the widow. Verse 26. The thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord. But the words of the pure are pleasant words. Thy word is pure, therefore thy servant loveth it. Proverbs 24, just one verse. Proverbs 24, one verse, verse 9. The thought of foolishness is sin, and the scorner is an abomination to men. Isaiah 1. Isaiah 1. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that one. Uh, the thought. The thought of foolishness is sin. And these guys come up with imaginations all day on how to justify sin. Okay? The thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord. But the words of the pure are pleasant words. Isaiah chapter 1. Verses 4 on to verse 6. Isaiah chapter 1, verses 4 on to verse 6. Ah, sinful nation. A people laden with iniquity. A seed of evildoers. Children that are corruptors. Not just corrupted, but corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. What we were talking about earlier... Why should ye be stricken anymore? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick 
The heart, the whole heart faint. The head is sick. Warped mind, deranged thinking, which even saints can do. But I find then a law. I read the scriptures. <laughs> like I said, you got that thought of sin going in your head, brother, sister? Read the book of Lamentations. I'll scare the hell out you. Ought to. But the hell, the head is, what does it say there? The whole head is sick. Coming up, they invent to themselves. They invent to themselves. Wicked imaginations, evil things, inventors of evil things. From the sole of thy foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying, rotting sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. No, but... These devils keep picking at them. Keep them open. Isaiah 55. Gotta come here. Of course, gotta come here. Isaiah 55, verses 8 on to verse 9. And of course, Christianity, Christianity takes this and, oh, whoa, they blow it way out of context, of course. But, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, with that right there, you think about them sinless perfection bozos. They think they're God, that they don't sin anymore. They do. So, they're saying their thoughts are like God's thoughts, and His ways are His ways. Their ways are His ways. We have His ways. But remember, not even Paul could walk perfectly with the Lord 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. He missed that. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Psalm 50, verses 21 under 22. Psalm 50. And here we go. And here's the problem. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such a one as thyself. God's your buddy. He's your bro. You're going to give him a bro hug. You take the God who is and want to bring him down to your level, making him equal with you. Again, the problem of you being your own God. But I will reprove thee. But I will reprove thee and set but I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. Now consider this, ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver. Proverbs 15, 27, on to verse 28. Right there. He that is greedy of gain troubleth his own house. Now, we think about money right away, don't we? Yes, we do. Gain is so much more substantial than just the do-re-mi. Popularity, public opinion, subscribers, views, or whatever. He that is greedy of gain troubleth his own house, but he that hateth gifts shall live briberies. The heart of the righteous studieth to answer, but the mouth of the wicked, but the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. And of course, this this one right here, this one right here, this is a this is a no-brainer. This was a no-brainer. Second Timothy, of course, of course, you know, and also we could go to uh, uh, that in First Thessalonians, study to be quiet, or something like that. That might be Second Thessalonians, but Second Timothy chapter two, Second Timothy chapter two, verses fourteen on to verse sixteen. 
Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Catholics, uh, sinless perfectionists, antinomianists, Methodists, Episcopalians, Presbyterians, a majority of the Baptists, okay, Pentecostals, okay, they don't rightly divide the word of truth. But they blend it all together. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more godliness. Just believe and receive. God loves you unconditionally. You gotta stop sinning. You're a luck because of your skin color. You gotta go to the church that Christ founded. And of course, 2 Timothy chapter 3, while we're here. 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3, uh, uh, verses 15 on to verse 17. And that from a child. Thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. That's why Paul said to Timothy, Let no man despise thy youth. Because why? From a child. Raise up a child in the way he should go, and he shall not depart from it. Bring up the children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Not hand them off to Jesuits to be taught evolution and LGBTQ woke theology. And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. And see, Acts 17.11? Acts 17.11? <laughs> One guy. They were lost. Listen to what you said about this. The, the uh, Bereans were lost. But yet they, have a, they wanted truth. And they were willing to search the scriptures for the truth. When you, Christian of 24 years, don't. Yeah. That, that's when that brilliant there, pal. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind. Readiness of mind. They wanted truth. They wanted truth and searched the scriptures daily whether these those things were so. They wanted truth and they went to the source of all truth. The authorized version. But see, do you want truth? You only want truth to justify yourself. But when you find out the truth, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by him. He speaks to you, the saint, through his truth. And see, the saint molds themselves to the truth. They don't mold this to themselves. They mold themselves to this. The scriptures ought to transform the saint. Not Christians transforming the word to fit their agenda. Which, hello Christianity. Hello Christianity. Hello! King James Bible believe in Christianity. Yeah. Yeah. I've grown to despise that moniker. I have grown to despise that uh, stigma. Look at the fruit of it. Look at the fruit of the denomination now called King James Bible believing Christianity or Bible believers. Yeah. 
get your money. Remember, just with James White, he I heard it. He referred to himself as a Bible believer. <laughs> Steve Anderson calls himself a Bible believer. And if you were to ask Sodomite Steve Anderson, oh uh, yeah, Steve Anderson, by the way, he's a Sodomite. Uh, yes, he is. Steve Anderson would say, yeah, this is perfect and errant given by inspiration word of God. But yet he's working for the Jesuits. Is he himself an actual Jesuit? I don't believe so. But he sure is working for him. That cannot be denied. Okay? All right. 27 on to verse 32. Uh, 28, excuse me. Oh, wait, no, where did we go? 29, excuse me, on to verse 32. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he heareth the prayer of the righteous. The light of the eyes rejoiceth the heart, and a good report maketh the bones fat. I neglected to write this one down. One second. Sorry about that. I, I, I had this written down elsewhere, but I didn't. Verse 30. The light of the eyes rejoiceth the heart, and a good report maketh the bones fat. Matthew 6. 19. On to verse 24. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth, doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Hmm. The light of the body is the eye. If thine eye be single, Thy whole body shall be full of light. Single. On the Lord Jesus Christ. First, uh, 2 Corinthians 11. 2 Corinthians 11. 2 Corinthians 11. Verses 13 on to verse 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. They have a changed life of their own making, not because they're a new creature. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Son of the morning. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, all like the sweet-talking devils. But also remember, ministers of righteousness goes beyond the religious sphere. Lawyers, doctors, counselors, politicians. Whose end shall be according to their works. Verse 23 in Matthew chapter 6. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? And remember, there is the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. Both lights. That light representing the one of the day, our Lord Jesus Christ. Are there not twelve days, twelve hours in the day? Therefore walk in the day, the night. Okay, We are not children of the night. I know it doesn't say that. But of the day. They walk in darkness and drunkenness. And here again, verse 24. No man can serve two masters. That's, what's, that's what Christianity is preaching to you. You can. You can serve yourself and serve God. You can have your cake and eat it too. You, you, can, just, you can do anything and you can. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are expedient. They're saying, don't worry about it. Be as the world. And hey, you can, you can have the best of both worlds. You can have heaven and you can have the best that this world offers. No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other. Or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. You can't have it both ways. Christianity preaches to you you can. 
You can't. Solomon, the richest man in Scripture, worldly as well, at least, you know, he tried it. He couldn't do it. He couldn't. He was wiser than any of us. Christianity preaches to you that you can serve God and mammon. You can't. And look at Christianity today, dear friend, brother, sister. Look at it. And you tell me. You tell me. Verse 30 in Proverbs 15 on to verse 32. The light of the eyes rejoice at the heart, and a good report maketh the bones fat. There is none good but God. And remember, I, you know, I want to hear at the, uh, uh, the judgment seat of Christ, well done, after I get my hide torn off. But I want to hear well done. And remember, Job. Remember what the Lord said about Job. An upright man, uh, uh, God, uh, let's read that, okay? Job, a good report maketh the bones fat. Job 1, verse 7, uh, verse 8. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? That report came from the Lord. And, oh, and well, since we've mentioned Job, the two videos on Job will be in the description box for you. That came from the Lord. And see, perfect, again, was not sin, sinlessly perfect. Because even Job mentions about that he has sinned. Okay? But, what's this talk? A perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God, that has wisdom, and escheweth evil, departing from evil. Verse 31 in Proverbs 15. The ear that heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise. The ear that heareth the reproof of life. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. A man cometh unto the Father but by him. Reproofs of instruction are the way of life. You get corrected through the scripture, you're abiding what? Among the wise, those who fear Lord and fear the Lord. Verse 32. Hmm. He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul. But he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. Proverbs 4. Proverbs 4. 24 on to bleh. I wrote it wrong. <laughs> 24 on to uh, 27. Uh, 23 on to 27. Excuse me. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a froward mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. The, the antinomianists have missed this one, of course. Let thine eyes look straight on. Let thy, thine eye be single on the Lord Jesus Christ. And let thine eye look, look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet. And let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Move thy foot from evil. And Proverbs 8, 33 on the 36. Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. If you refuse the instruction that comes from the Lord, you're a fool. Or at least acting foolish. <laughs> you see this? <laughs> okay. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. And Jesus Christ is the door. Okay? Watching daily. Search the scriptures daily. Okay? 
For whoso findeth me, findeth life, and it shall obtain favor of the Lord. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by him. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that love, all they that hate me, <laughs> love death. And read this in part of the notes, but I, I, I get we gotta add Romans six. <laughs> Verses uh, twenty on to twenty three. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. Saint? Do you really believe that you're doing better than you deserve? But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Thirty-two and thirty-three, and then we'll be done. He that res refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul. But he that regard, but he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. And unto man he said, the fear of the Lord. That is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Job 28, 28. And Luke 15. Today is the 15th, right? Luke 15. Just one verse. Verse 11. Excuse me. Luke 14, 11. 14.11. Luke 14.11. For whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Humble yourself, therefore, for God, and he will lift you up. That, dear friends, is going to be it for today's video. This was not this was not the video that I thought I thought I was going to do today. But, uh, you know, doing devotional reading with uh, the Father, and it's just, you know, it's like, look at that, look at this, look at this, look at that. It's like, and then next year I wrote it down here first because when I read scripture nowadays, I like to have one of these, you know, and if something's there, it's like, oh, write that down, oh, write that down. I, I like sticky notes. But, uh, you know, you can get close. <laughs> so, anyway, I just wanted to share with you what the Lord shared with me today in my daily devotion time with the Lord. So, thank you very much for watching this if you do. Thank you, dear brethren, for your prayers and for everything that you do for us. Thank you. The Lord bless you a million fold. So, going to get this. I uh, take a couple hours to get this uploaded. Thank you. I love you. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.